and welcome to a brand new video of the target individual program the target individual experience but i am going to take things on a little bit uh different heading the reason why that is is to uh deal with these uh, religious fanatics particularly these christians and muslims who want to believe that their god is the you know the one and only god their religion is the the best out of all the religion no other religion can compete that's why they're always fighting against each other but understanding where all of that came from from the beginning it didn't start with the christian the christianity it didn't start with, it, with islam as you know or should know that Islam was the, the last creation of another form of religion that is the uh, most populous today. It's not Christianity, it is Islam. And so we have to understand where these things come from, and particularly since I'm a TI, and particularly since I'm not a Christian or Muslim, uh, you know, I'm being attacked by uh, religious fundamentalists as well as those within my own family i got to share this and i got to start educating people on the truth now we all know the oldest civilization or uh, the greatest ancient civilization is a Kemet, which is called egypt today um, before the Kemet was uh, conquered by the greeks who later on changed the name to Egypt but originally it was Kemet so let's get into the lesson and uh, I'm going to play a uh, voicemail left to me by again these religious fanatics <laughs> with the number 666 talking about uh, worshiping the devil's uh, religion okay anything to demonize African people spiritual belief system All right so I want you guys to pay close attention as we go through this and this is very very important All right, okay um, so before I get into that I think I should play the uh, voicemail first and then afterwards I get into the um, origin of these religions, where they can come from, how they use different beliefs uh, from different um, culture to create the Old Testament and so called Hebrew Old Testament. And um, you know, let's let's go, let me uh, pull up that. Um, all right, okay, so uh, you guys see my other videos. I talked about um, targeting, you know, particularly by these religious people. And so um, tonight at 12.50 a.m. in the morning, I received another phone call. And, of course, it's a 516. That's a Long Island um, area code, all right? Again, is sending a subliminal message Long Island again go back to you know that deportation theme that they love to run and then they put the number they have the number 666 again this is the newly created number that they've done 3232 um, again right again 32 is a number in which they were targeting me with but um, you know I'm beginning to interpret it a little bit differently now I don't know if that's correct um, because again uh, what's happening here is white supremacy and white supremacist and you know, so there's a knock on the uh, <laughs> you heard that knock right it is um, what's happening it is uh, 2 uh, 24 a.m. in the morning and you 
you know, whenever whenever I say certain things, they will do a knock or a car honk or a siren or have you. In this case, it was just a knock when I talk about it. When I mentioned the word white supremacy, now white supremacy. So um, let me play the message so you guys can uh, hear. Okay. Our topic today is doctrines of merit. Now, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of merit. First. So let me play it again. Our topic today is doctrines of merit. Now the spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, given he the seducing spirits and doctrines of death. First. So, for many of you who don't know, the meaning of the word religion means to bind the mind, or in our case, rebind our mind into a new doctrine, one that has been created for the specific purpose of control and economic gain for those who are the so-called um, church particularly the catholic church and what you see particularly in the black community is that you have a lot of uh, pastors who are now uh, understanding the game the economic game of religion and this is why you see them buying mansions and you know uh, Ferraris and Bentleys and all this other stuff because they understand how powerful religion is and how it can be used as a tool to brainwash people to giving up their heart and money, right? And so what they do is that they they sell you the idea of salvation and scare you with the thought of going to hell, okay? And in this case, and what they're also doing is selling you the promise of hope that if you tie, if you tied, uh, you will get tenfold of what you get okay and we all know that's not the, the case because there are many people millions of people out there tied and um and don't receive tenfold back but you know this is the the belief system it is a psychological trick right to support and enrich these individuals so um there was another uh message let me get to that. Okay, so this is another message that was earlier Wednesday night, and I'm going to play it. Okay, and what that is, that is the theme song, that the, or the theme. Uh, I guess sound from the Hunger Games, and um, you know they've been doing this for quite a while. I've talked about this uh, before. I have plenty of videos uh, referencing these sort of sounds and what they'll do. And so it's nothing new. I'm just you know putting it out there so that people can understand what's really going on. So in the other video, the other voicemail I played, it talks about the the um, the the uh, what the devil, what have you, you know, anything that has associated with African culture, whites have coined it to be demonic or of the devil's uh, belief or the, the devil's working, which is you know their belief system because again they understand our history. We don't, right? For the most part, I mean, I do, but you know, the majority of, of black people in uh, the diaspora do not understand uh, their own culture as it relates to you know their people, the African people, right? So this is going to be a, a history lesson. Um, so not just for black people, but also for PIs who are interested in wanting to know these things and also dispel some of the the mythos. Uh, surrounding uh, Christianity. Okay, so let's uh,
let's go to the meaning of the word devil right so word devil which is a noun one in christian and jewish belief this chief evil spirit satan belief in the devil also nowhere in the bible you will see the word devil okay that is a creation uh, in people's in these religious people's mind back in the the dark ages in Europe okay now uh, informal uh, too informal a person of specific characteristics a lucky devil in the verb form it is uh, one dated informal act as a janitor uh, sorry acts as a junior assistant for a lawyer or uh, other profession there is a possibility of deviling for fellow members of the bar in North America it is harass or worry someone. He was deviled by the newfound fear. Okay, now since I know the people who are created these types of program, these white supremacists, and who continue to do these things, like I said, I leave me all these voicemails and stuff like that. Um. You know, I decided to, hey, let, let's see who the devil is, you know, because it was, hey, it isn't me and it isn't black people. So let's see who the devil, let's, let's see how history has proved who the devils are. So the radical eyes for equity. Okay. This is a writing by P.L. Thomas. Okay. History proves that the white man is the devil. Again, this is a subject that I'm going to tackle, okay? And if you're white, you're TI, don't get offended. You know, you are a target also. And the people who are doing this to you, the, the top that created this program, are all white, just like you, okay? So we're going to uh, dive into this article, okay? So history prove that the white man is a public career and life of Malcolm X are taught by are taught I'm sorry the, the public career of the public career and life of Malcolm X are fraught with contradictions and controversy often complicated by the nation of Islam and its discredited leader Elijah Muhammad. Now again uh, Elijah Muhammad is not discredited uh, in any way uh, and you know the nation of Islam members uh, consider him to be a uh, a Christ, okay? And I say the word Christ, and I'm going to talk about the meaning of that also, right? and how it's been misused and misinterpreted. So Malcolm X infamy, as its contrast with the idolizing and misrepresentation of Martin Luther King Jr. as a passive radical, lies often in his slogan by any means necessary and history proves that the white man is a devil while malcolm x himself confronted some of his more controversial and confrontational stance in 2006 the u.s is faced with a press uh, a pre-science in what seems to be hyperbole and racial anger however there is much to consider uh, the evil capacity often behind the face, the face, should, and also faces of men, now, right? So living just across the highway from my neighborhood, Todd uh, Kolkhep has confessed to viciously to vicious murders. The police found a woman chained in a storage container for two months. Uh, Kolkhep represented to a disturbing degree the classic profile of serial killers and sex offenders, central of which is being a white male at the University of Wisconsin. The 20-year-old student, Alice Cook, has been arrested and appeared in court on Thursday, charged with 15 crimes against five women, including sexual assault, strangulation, and false imprisonment. 
His modu operandi, according to the police and prosecutor, was to befriend fellow students and eventually entrap and viciously attack them while keeping notebooks detailing his alleged targets. Kohept and Cook, white males, are relative affluent, are not outliers, outliers yet political leaders, and the media persist in, characteriz in characterizing for the U.S. public much different images of who to fear. Mexicans, black males, Muslims. Daily violence includes sexual aggression and assault is a real threat in a way nearly opposite of these political and media messages each of us should fear people who look like us and families and friends and acquaintances deserve nearly equal scrutiny. Political race baiters and the mainstream media rarely stray from the black on black crime message, but it also fails to add a key factor. Crime is almost entirely intra-racial as the white and white crime rate 86% is nearly identical to the black and black crime rate of 94%. And, uh, you know, so there you go. So Malcolm X rhetoric may still seem inflammatory, but James Baldwin, more measured charge confront the same racial masking and tension. White Americans find it as difficult as white people elsewhere as elsewhere do to divest themselves of the notion that they are in a possession of some intrinsic value that black people need or want. And this assumption, which for example, makes the solution of the Negro problem depend on the speed with which Negroes accept and adapt white standards, is re revealed in all kinds of striking ways. Bobby's Kennedy assurance that the Negro can become president in 40 years to the unfortunate tone and warm congratulation with which so many liberals address their Negro, their Negro equals. It is the Negro, of course, who is presumed to have become equal. An achievement that not only proved the confident fact that perseverance has no color, but also overwhelm overwhelmingly uh, corroborates the white man's sense of his own value. White men control the political and media narrative, and thus white males are bathed in the compassionate light of the white male glaze of power. Everyone else becomes, becomes the feared others. The hatred spurred by Donald Trump is not solely what should be feared in this context, but that he personifies and speaks to the white man's own, the white man's sense of his own value that seeks to erase that other as Astra Taylor reported from a Trump rally in North Carolina. A few months ago, Trump had rallied in Wilmington, uh, North Carolina, the site of America's only and large forgotten coup. In 1898, in the uh, warning days of reconstruction, rioting white supremacists overthrew the multiracial progressive fusion government, disposing democratically elected leaders of both races and killing black citizens mercilessly. After that, populism in North Carolina, as in the South more broadly, was a white affair. At his rally near the site of the historic shocking savagery, Trump suggests a Second Amendment people to do something about Hillary. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this. Uh, let's go here. So, all right, in a dialogue between James Baldwin and Nikki Giovanni, Baldwin argues the reason people think it's important to be white is that they think it's important not to be black. It's not the world that was my oppressor because what the world does to you, if the world does it to you long enough and effective enough, you begin to do it to yourself. You become a collaborator and accomplish of your own murderers because you believe the same things they do. They think it's important to be white and you think it's important to be white. They think it's a shame to be black and you think it's a shame to be black and you have no corroborations around you of any other sense of life. Yes, we must be vigilant about the white gaze and the male gaze, both in which as Baldwin witness corrupts the agent and object 
of that gaze. But we must be vigilant about the white male accusatory. We must be but we must be vigilant, uh, vigilant about the white male accusatory finger designed to keep everyone else gaze somewhere other than where the most powerful and too often the most evil resides. Okay, and that's is women, white men, and also white women. So I'm not gonna, uh, <laughs> you know, let the white women off the hook on this, because there is there are as much evil within them as their counterparts. Okay, and what they do is try to, what they've done is make us just like them. Okay, and this is why we can't unify. Because we, in our minds, we see ourselves as them, even though we are not. And even though they show us and let us know that we are not. So, let's move on. So, in that, in the number, uh, the phone number, they had 666. And I'm going to talk about that. Right? Beautiful 666, the power and impact of melanin, the God genes has on mankind. Now, uh, let me... Put back on the camera here so you guys can see me. Let's talk about this. So, our ancient African ancestors created, developed the sciences. Uh, philosophical beliefs, chemistry, biology. They had these things for thousands of years before any European stepped foot in Kemet. And of course they built the pyramids, which again, no one can build today, given the tools, the modern tools that we have. We, we, we can't build it, you know, we, we cannot create machinery uh, that can lift these uh, stones. And sometimes they're like about uh, 20 tons, I believe. So how did they do that? All right. Not also that, but these pyramids were built with mathematical precision. Not also that, but the largest three in Giza lines up to the stars okay so how did they do this how did they know this right now a lot of racist uh, Egyptologists would claim that um, you know Kemet wasn't the oldest civilization that the Sumerians was older which is not true um, we know that for a fact that Egypt not Kemet is the oldest and greatest civilization on the earth okay and if you look at the history, you look at the Pharaonic kings, particularly the uh, pre-dynastic uh, periods, you see evidence of astrological studies. We see evidence of uh, philosophical belief systems with the creation of the so-called gods. And, you know, our ancestors understood that you know these so-called netters uh, because there was no word for God there was no word for God so netter N uh, T R uh, N uh, E T E R which means nature or which means uh, the each of these deities represent an aspect of nature as well as an aspect of ourself right from our lower self to our higher self and so they understand this and they they practice this because comedic spirituality is more about science as it is about superstitious and religious belief and it's something that we don't understand you know as, as, as a people particularly black people we don't understand that at all and then the our ancestors looked on our counterpart our female counterpart as equal or sometimes even above us 
as males. Right? Because the first goddess, or the first deity ever created, was the goddess of a woman. I mean, not the goddess, but, you know, was the, the deification of, of, of the woman. Because of her ability to create life and nurture that life and feed that life, just as the earth nurture and feeds its people. So, for those of you who don't understand that, this is uh, the concept, right? So let's talk about some of the uh, the um, history in terms of the belief system. And so this site called raceandhistory.com, uh, we're going to discuss uh, the Egyptian belief system. And I'm going to go through a couple points here. All right. So the Egyptian Great Year and Christianity. Okay. So there can be no understanding of the major religions of the world unless one has a working knowledge and an unbiased appreciation of the way the ancient pre-Christian beliefs saw the spiritual world. As impossible task for some religious types given the extent in which man took away the brain the Almighty gave them. The late Dr. John Henry Clark, or J.H. Clark, never tired of reminding us that Europeans not only colonized people, but also colonized people understanding of history. Nowhere is that more evident than in religion. In this essay, the second of a three-part glimpse of Western Zanity from an Afrocentric perspective, the comedic Egyptian language and development, development of the calendar will be examined in relation to the formulation of Judaism and I guess Christianity. <laughs> okay, he does say that we have the X. Um, this is as vital in reconstruction the his reconstructing the history of Africa as the archaeological and the classical Greco Roman historical accounts. Indeed, Charles French and Ivan Sotomayor argue that the reconstruction of the history of African people, wherever they are in the world, one must utilize the multidisciplinary approach. Literal interpretation of the scriptures are all but useless, but it is not all sacred writings of that time were written in such a way that only the initiated could understand what the text really meant. Often the text did not speak of a particular time but were cleverly constructed moral teachings handed down from generation to generation. In Africa along the Nile, teaching also corresponded to the zodiac time period where celestial observers divided an imaginary heaven circle into 12 ox. Okay, remember that number. Circle into 12 ox. All right? Within each ox, all teaching all teachings corresponded to a particular zoot type. We shall first examine this form of time, reckoning so that we can better understand why certain biblical texts were written the way they were. Also, understanding the concept of the comedic Egyptian great year and the procession of the equinox is critical to understanding the history of the world and how we, like our ancestors, can transverse backwards and forward through time in order to access knowledge. The Great Year. There are very, very few historians today who would openly admit that highly intelligent human societies were over than 7,000 years. But the African invention of the 365 and a quarter days calendar is one example that make a mockery of the traditional views of Eurocentric academia. It comes as, as a surprise to many of us that our calendar, I bet with a few Roman altercations or alterations, is actually of Egyptian origin. 
surprise, because unfortunately, the African contribution to such scientific achievement is still ignored, and many textbooks remain still uh, still retain the misconception that the calendar was invented in Sumeria. Of course, Sumer is painted as a <clears throat> excuse me uh, Semitic uh, read Caucasian civilization. Never mind that the Sumerians refer to themselves as black heads. So even the Sumerians will tell you that they are black. Okay. Never mind the fact that much of classical Africa civilization were already quite old before Sumeria or Europe had even entered into history. Also gloss over are the classical Greek and Roman accounts that the Egyptians and Nubians had been charting the heavens for over 10,000 years. Dr. Ben and Gerald Mosley argued that in Egypt alone, Africa, African stargazers have been observing and recording movements in the heavens for at least 52,000 years. Evidence from the dating of corrosion patterns of the Great Sphinx as well as the position of the pyramids <clears throat> in relation to the stars in Orion's belt shows clearly that our accepted chronology of human history is totally inadequate. To begin to even appreciate the genius of our ancestors, we have no choice but honestly admit that what we think we know about the ancient world is actually very minuscule and much of that has been tainted by intellectual dishonesty, imperialistic design, religious conservatism, and outright racial bigotry. Professor Molefi Asante and Dr. Finch maintained that unlike the Tigris Euphrates region, the Nile Valley was ideally suited to the study of the celestial bodies. Egypt, a dry country, enough, in, uh, sorry, enjoy clear nighttime skies for months on end, ideal for naked eye and telescopic observation of the stars and planets. Consequently, they were able to diverse three calendar, stellar, lunar, and solar. The lunar year of 354 days as well was well known to them and Dr. Yosef Ben Jacobin, Sir James Fraser, and Shiak and Diop have shown that long before the dynastic periods they had discovered the 360 day calendar which was retained even though they were well aware that this cycle lost a quarter of a day each year. Being practical people, they used 360 days for the conventional year because it gave them convenience. Whole numbers multiply by which the year could be subdivided equally into 12 30 day months. Again, at number 12, right? 10 36 days, the uh, decans. 36 10 day weeks, etc. It is no coincidence that the 360 day solar year is the same number of degrees as the geometric circle. We knew that the Earth was spherical and described an elliptical orbit around the Sun. The Kemites later added five additional days, which accident incidentally are the root of the carnival tradition of the world. The measurement of the 365 days solar year was close but not exact. It did, however, provide an impetus for two more precise measurements. The solar year and the, and the uh, sidereal or exotic year. The exotic year was obtained from a celestial occurrence known as the hilarical rising of the star Sirius, Greek Sotis Kemetic Septet. For most of the year of the latitude of Thebes, the upper Egypt, the southern half, Sirius is invisible in the southern heaven. But just before dawn, at the summer solstice, it suddenly appears. Within 20 days after its appearance, the Nile flooded its banks. This had a profound impact on the minds of early astronomers, astronomers who likened this star to a century, a dog. They rounded off the length of the tropical year to 365 and a quarter days, an almost exact 
in between the sotitical and sotic years. What is significant about the Sotic's calendar is its role in reconstructing comedic dynastic chronology because certain renal years of several reigns through the course of comedic history were recorded by reference to this range. So again, he talks about it having records, okay, his, for, his, for historical purpose. So our ancestors, you know, knew the importance of keeping records. And we'll talk about some of the, you know, the deities. All right. So it is known that the comedic new year and the heliacal rising of Sirius coincide in 139 BCE, 1321 BCE, 2781 BCE, and 4241 BCE, which is then which is when it was officially adopted. This was the exact time, same time that the Chemites began their Pharaonic dynasty in Kemet. By contrast, the much uh, trotted uh, Sumerian civilization had not yet entered into history. Okay, Space doesn't just allow us to explore in detail this amazing phenomenon. However, with regards to Judaism and Christianity, the Egyptian great year is very significant. For Sirius to complete its elliptical orbit took roughly 26,000 years, the great year of recession of the equinox. It cannot be exact because the Earth axis is tilted by 23 and a half degrees, which gives us two north poles, of, right? True north and magnetic north. Because of the axis tilt, the magnetic north pole wobbles like a top around true north as the Earth makes its journey around the sun. This means the position of the equinox, the equinoxes move slightly every year against the background of stars located in the brand of sky defined on Earth by the Tropic of Cancer at 23 and a half degrees north of the equinox and the Tropic of Capricorn being 23 and a half south of the equator. This caused the equinox to slip backwards 20 minutes each year in a circular fashion. So I want you guys to understand the intelligence that our ancestors had. Okay, that they were able to come up with these uh, astrological uh, mathematics as well as understanding the the stars and how the stars have moved and everything. In fact, they're the one that gave the, the zodiac names, right? And then the Greek came later and superimposed their own version of it over our ancestors. Okay, so again, history is something that we need to really understand, and particularly for these religious individuals, these Christians and these Muslims, they, they need a, 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 a rebinding of their mind. Okay, so the Kemet's divine this 26th great year into 12 ox of about 2160 years, each with its own star constellation that became its sign. Since most of these signs were given animal forms, the later Greeks called this celestial band zodiac from the term zoan, animal. These signs were tracking backwards from the opening of the Egyptian year. The lion, Atum, the scarab, Kapera, twins, Set and Heru, the bull, Ptah, uh, Yusir, the ram, Amen, the fish, Intui, the water bringer, uh, Minet, the nurse, and Happy the Vow, the goat, Menden, the archer, Set or uh, Shu, the scorpion, Saget, the scale, Ma'at, Moawer and the virgin mother, mother uh, Neat or Aset Isis. As the spring equinox passes through the zodiac sign, an age was inaugurated that was seen, seemed to symbolically, mythically, and physically dominate earthly life during the 2160 years. 
the Kemetic Pharaonic, Pharaonic Dynasty began in the age of the bull, circa uh, 4241 to 4245 BCE. Jamaican bull symbols and deity Ptah and Yusef, the dominant symbol of that age, when the spring equinox move into the preceding age, that of the ram, 2200 BCE. Ram deity Amen and his city Waset, which is Thebes, dominated Kemetic cultural life. This was the age when the Hebrew appear in history. Okay? And, as the Old Testament shows, ram and lamb and shepherd imagery uh, permeate, permeated their symbolic life. When the spring economic moved into the Piscean age, the fish, uh, 68 BCE, the people of the Lower Nile observed fish symbolism, and it was within two centuries that Christianity competed complete with fish symbols, note that disciples were said to be of fishermen, began its run. Okay? So again, history, 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 people. All right, now let's look at how this and other interesting phenomena shaped what eventually became Judaism and Christianity. The Old Testament. Most of us have been indoctrinated in the belief that Christianity and, for that matter, Judaism dropped onto mankind in the midst of an extremely sinful world. The historical reality is much more complicated than that. What we believe to be some new revolutionary dispensation beginning with Adam and crystallizing with Jesus actually goes back to the dim mist of iniquity. Now, ancient Hebrew sacred writings were not meant to be interpreted literally. Okay, again, I'm going to say this, right? Ancient Hebrew sacred writings were not meant to be interpreted literally. Much of what comprised the Torah and the Old Testaments were myth, allegorical proverbs, and poems. Many of the names found in the Old Testament were not referencing to historical individuals, but actually referring to whole tribes and communities. Indeed, most of the Old Testament writing was simply poetic tales meant to convey the value of patriarchal Hebrew society. If we compare these myths to their comedic Egyptian sources, we can begin to explore the deeper meaning. Sheikh Abdiyab and Gerald Messi, uh, uh, Messi made this easy easier by comparing linguistic pattern. In a private conversation with, fin with Charles Finch, Diop showed how the Jewish scripture borrowed intensely from its Egyptian parent. The deep symbolism and the typography of the ancient Nile Valley sacred science, again, science, like I said, not religion, science, okay, prove us with the means to the complex process of understanding what the writers of the sacred Jewish and Christian texts may have wanted to convey to their devotees. It is not as simplistic as the priests and pastors make it out to be. The Adam and Eve story, for instance, is a prime example of age-old typography corrupted into a historical event. The first man is said to be Adam, with his first consort being Eve, although in later Jewish literature, he had a first wife named Lilith. Now, in many Jewish texts, the name Adam and Eve are written using lowercase letters because these were not actual historical people, okay? Understand that. These were not historical people. The Jewish myth, or rather the Jewish version of the myth, was simply their way of explaining the origin of man as well as explaining their cultural practices such as the way women ought to be regarded in that particular society. We will attempt to look behind the little image of such figures as Adam by applying Macy's uh, method of linking biblical names with their comedic Adam is said to be the first man in the image of God, the father of mankind, the completion of creation. He is also the comedic ATM or Atum, defined conversely as the first God in the image of man and mankind's father. The root of ATM is TM, Tem, Tum, which has several meanings, i.e., mankind, 
people completion some is the complete divine man a cognate root of tem is dem which means to name as the biblical adam was the namer of animals note also with reference to the great year that genesis represent not only the creation of the cosmos but also the beginning of a new cosmic time cycle the great year begins in the age of leo circa 10,000 bce atom is the lion's is a lion face one who creates shu and tefnu also represented in lion forms another parallel we should take note of is that in the hebrew in hebrew adam is aduma clay like made of clay the comedic deity uh, kanum who is also who, who is shown as a ram is depicted sitting at a potter's wheel fashioning the gods out of clay uh, let me see if i can find that um that image and i'll get back to this okay and behind me is a picture of the falls of kemet egypt the medunetter i wish to call the hieroglyphics you'll see Kanum, right? You see, is created man, the shaping man, the potter's wheel. Again, this is a history lesson to you Christians and Muslims. Okay, so, uh, so when uh, then we have Adam's consort Eve, Hebrew Shavah. Have a seduced by the serpent of in the tree of life. The comedic great mother serpent is Hefir. The name also means fruit, as in the fruit of life. Our biblical Genesis is taken from the funerary uh, uh, ritual of Kemet. The parallels do not end there. The Garden of Eden, Heb Adin. The mystical land where they were created is also represented as the great enclosure and religious motif, while in Kemetic, den means enclosure. When Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden and settled in the land of Nod. Nod is Nud in Kemet, outside of away from. Okay, so you guys need to really, really understand where your belief system comes from and how uh, it has been rewritten in such a way that has been devastating to the minds of millions and billions of people who have led to, which have led to the murder, slaughter, torture, rape, pillage of countless societies and the destruction of those uh, societies, okay, and culture. All right, so let's go. Their first two children, Cain and Abel, who are the Warren twins so prominent in the comedic mystery, Yusir and Seth. But more that than that, Cain, uh, Crayon, Hebrew, who strikes down and kills Abel, is identified with the comedic set and the word Quinn, which means to strike down. Abel, Abel in the Hebrew is rendered in Egyptian as Hab here, feast or right. We can see the parallels to Abel who offer a lamb to God in a ceremonial ritual. Note also that the Hebrew beliefs come at the same time in the comedic great year age of the ram, which begins circa uh, 2218 BCE. The great flood. Noah's flood is also rich with parallel. The biblical Noah, Heb, Noach, is uh, that's the Hebrew, right? So H E B is the one who survives the flood, who cultivates wine and becomes drunk. This identifies him with Yosef, sometimes depicted with a bunch of grapes and uh, an agricultural deity in is uh, colored green 
from the comedic new arc is the Nile flood which irrigates the cultivated fields. The arc in one sense, the boat on the Nile, but in this celestial sense it is the bouquet of the moon that sails across the heavenly flood of the night sky in its solar mythos. It and it's the word mythos. So again, explain to you that these are all myths, right? It is the solar boat on its daily course. Nu means drunkenness. Yusur was the spirit who possessed the grapes that became wine. Wine drinking was reserved for the comedic priests who, in their intoxicated state, would commune with Netera. To this day, alcohol is still referred to as spirits. Okay. Noah's son Ham is Shem in Hebrew, pronounced Hashem. This is the individual who has accused so many generations of blacks to suffer some of the most unspeakable horror because it was said that the curse put on him by Noah was the curse of blackness. Well, this black Hebrew Shem or Kem or Kem, Kem or Kem, the name of ancient Egyptian call themselves, and this means black, thus Kemet is the land of the black. Noah, Noah's other sons, Shem and Yapet, also have comedic roots. Shem, Hebrew Shep, is the mystical and aponious ancestors of the Semites. This linguistic term has mysteriously become an ethnic term to describe the white Jews. Okay, Abraham. This, the supported, uh, the supposed uh, patriarch of the Hebrews, thought he may, though he may and may not have been an actual historical f figure, can be linked to a comedic phototype like the other mythical characters. His story began when he was, when he as Abram enters the Nile Valley around 2000 to 1900 BCE. Abraham is said to be the founder of the Semitic people. Again, I must caution the reader that Semitic is a linguistic term and not and not ethnic as it is being used by Eurocentric Eurocentric media, scholarships, etc. <clears throat> Semitic is used as a euthanism for Caucasian, regardless of the fact that Chaldea, the region where this Adam Adam Abram uh, comes from, was populated by numerous ethnic and linguistic tribes. Another skimmed over point is that Hagar, who bears Abram's first son, is an Egyptian woman and her skin would therefore be more than a little food coloring. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nevertheless, according to the story, Abram's first son, Ishmael, that by Hagar, Sarah, Adam's wife and half-sister, thereby betraying yet another parallel with Egypt, becomes jealous of Hagar's ability to conceive and force her to run away while pregnant with Ishmael into the desert. There, she is confronted by an angel who says, You are with child of the bearer's son. You shall name him Ishmael, because the Lord has heard of your affliction. The Arabs claimed him as their progenitor. However, the quote in his name with the comedic cipher is very revealing. Ishmael is Yishmael in Hebrew, which in comedic can be rendered Yishmael. Yish means place and mere is affliction. It doesn't end there because Hagar at the same encounter is told that Ishmael will become a wild ass of a man, evoking the pre-Mosaic veneration of the golden ash year, the type of Ra and the type of Ra and Set. Abraham himself is not without an Egyptian root given the name and comedic means the servant of will, A, B, desire, or will, Ra, the power of the divine that causes the sun to shine, M, fire light, M, servant. Okay, so this connection 
with Ra is strengthened further with the name Isaac, which in Hebrew is Yishak. Isaac, according to the story, would be burnt as an offering to God and comedic Yish place Ak burnt offering or the keys here. Also, God stays on the hand of Abraham at the last moment and provides a lamb. This indicates that the zodiac calendar was in the age of the ram. Other parallels of Ishmael and Isaac, the warring twins, that features prominent in Egyptian spiritual thought. Isaac marries to Rebecca, the brother, sister, cousin, parent of Yeshua and Aset, uh, Isis, and then there is Jacob, both as Jacob, Kem, uh, Yah, Quep, I'm sorry to say these words correctly, <laughs> so please bear with me, you guys can read it for yourself. Uh, the heavenly circuit of Ra. Jacob changed his name to Israel. Kem, Yish, uh, Yish, Ra, um, Ir, Yish, place, Ra, son, Ear create, i.e., the place Ra created, i.e., a place in Emeta where souls having been justified by Yeshua climbed the ladder to us both. This is the source of the biblical Jacob's ladder. Then we come to Joseph. Now, needless to say, the biblical history is, uh, is historic, historicized myth mythology copied from two ancient comedic legends however the picture becomes clear when decoded joseph is yeshput yeshup sorry in hebrew jacob israel favorite son in egyptian this name can be taken in three forms yusufi yusufi yusef you means to come sefi child son thus yusefi is the ever coming son. Horus, uh, uh, Heru Horus the Christ, okay, Caress, uh, Horus, who dawns every day in the morning sun of God. You is also you, the golden ass. Those visible emblem is the sun. Joseph, Yusuf, then is the son of you. Further, Seth. Sep is the name of Yusir, who so that uh, Yusuf is Yusir Osiris, the coming one, who in disguise is really Heru Horus. All this points to the claim by Dr. Ben Finch, Macy, and uh, Pateri that the pre Exodus Hebrew were largely comedic Canaanite set worshippers. Set is the reverse of the life given Ra, the soul of fire. Set is also the golden ass depicted as bearing the solar disk between his ears. This form of veneration fell out of favor when the Hyksos, the shepherd kings who invaded and occupied Lower Egypt circa 1675 BCE, were finally expelled about 200 years later. Space does not permit the detailed exploration of all the coded names and locations found in the Old Testament, and there are many, David, Solomon, uh, Joshua, Miriam. However, the figure of Moses must be highlighted since it was a pivotal point in the Old Testament and Christian history. Okay, and so I'm not even going to go on with, with this. I'm going to skip this. Uh, I will include the link to this so you guys can read it yourself. Okay. So, the great year in Christian myth, it is not unusual in the formation of new religious system. Again, new religious system, the creators attack and demonize the fate that came before it, even if these fates were directly responsible for its very existence. And this is what the Greeks did, the Romans did, right? And the Greeks came in and conquered Kemet, they learned all they could, they transferred uh, the comedic sacred writings into their own uh, interpretation in which you had the Greek goddesses and, and go gods and goddesses and then the Roman came in and did the same all right in the meantime uh, destroying a lot of the sacred texts and sacred documents 
of the previous uh, culture. Okay, so again, this is nothing new. Right, often a new faith is presented in such a way as to appear that it was created in isolation and or represented the highest dispensation born in the midst of a world steep in iniquities. The old faith is painted with a brush of evil and godlessness. Hence the voicemail I received, <laughs> you know, trying to demonize uh, the comedic belief system, uh, this comedic science, right, the spiritual science. Uh, the old faith is painted with a brush of evil and godlessness. Judaism, uh, Judaism, uh, progeny of progeny of Kemet, Egypt, and Babylon, branded its parents as demonic and oppressive. Christianity, likewise, drew from ancestral Judaism and Kemet only what it wanted, rejected the rest, and then burned its ancestral bridges. Its attempts were not thorough however the pagan trace of comedic wisdom teaching and funerary rituals the legacy of bell and mitra uh Yusser and aset uh, Zor uh zoroaster and Thetel can be uncovered with the right keys you will look at christianity employing the method Maisie and diop used to link judaism to the stellar and lunar tradition of the ancient Nile Valley. Charles Finch and John Jackson inform us that Gerald Macy traced Christianity's origin back some 10,000 years into inner Africa. It is not hard to see how comedic sacred science diffused to the emergent faith. The early church founded the early church founded Egypt a safe haven after being persecuted elsewhere in the Mediterranean largely because of their own disruptive and subversive actions and not because of their belief as they like to tell us. The early uh, desert fathers like Antony the Hermit and countless others were the first to mount Christianity into shape. The church early saints, bishops and martyrs were Africans, right? The capital of Christendom up until the time of Constantine was Alexandria and the first two Christian churches were established on the island of uh, Philia on the Nile. Further, Egyptian and Ethiopians were the first people to convert to Christianity because they saw it no different than what they were worshipping all along. As previously mentioned, the New Testament is filled with hidden references and comedic Assyrian myths form a bridge between Christianity and ancient Africa. Since the Assyrian drama is well known and well documented, we will go into depth into details, but will only touch on more outstanding points. Okay, um, Yusir as the principle of vegetation is often depicted as a green colored deity. He sacrificed himself as the harvest grain from which bread is made to be eaten as real food for regeneration. His rebirth occur in new sprouts of the preceding spring. In central tradition, uh, in certain tradition, you sure dies from a scorpion sting, a reference to the harvest that occur in the sign of Scorpio. This sacrifice harks back to an earlier time when the great mother sacrificed herself for the sins of the world so that the community might live. So what did he what what does it say? It says the great mother sacrifices herself. Okay, let me let me, let me teach now. I, I mean, I'm, I'm reading, but you know, you guys can, you know, read this yourself. Okay. You see, the great ancestors was identified as the great wine and blood and spirit is also his blood and spirit. A comedic priestly ritual was to drink wine symbolizing the blood of Yeshua. Here we see the genesis of the sad there. The ritual mentioned in the Bible where Jesus shares bread and wine with his disciples and the origin of the communion in the Roman Christianity. Yusir is the son and yet the consort of his mother Aset, in which the same way that Jesus is was the son yet consort of his mother Mary. The name Mary was also a title of Aset 
ISIS. How many of you knew that? This also was the source of the son, mother, and husband, wife, sister reference we find in the Old Testament. Further, in the drama, you see he was born in a cave to a virgin mother. In the book of uh, Protevangelion, if I correct you, Protevangelion, one of the gospels that was later suppressed by the church, the same situation occurred with Jesus' mother Mary. Now, Aset's name in Egyptian means seat, chapel, wound, or tombed, i.e. cave. In most ancient African spiritual system, the name Mary Maya, etc., means the sea. Water was reverenced as an aspect of the great mother goddess, a reference to the amniotic fluid that protects the child in the mother's womb. Thus, Mary was more a symbolic title than a name. The symbolism becomes more apparent when one, when one looks at the myth from its celestial origin. In late antiquity, antiquities, the sun reached its lowest point the winter solstice about december 22nd where it remained stationary in that position for about three days and then just after midnight on december 25th the sun began began its ascent on the elliptic reaching its zenith at the summer solstice on june 22nd the beginning of its descent uh, i'm sorry the beginning of its ascent on december 25th was metaphorically its birth and since this ascent began at the dark, deepest hour of darkness. On the morning of December 25th, the sun was said to be born in a cave. In the pre-Christian era, the constellation Virgo, the Virgin, was positioned due east on the horizon as the sun started its ascent on December 25th. In other words, the Son of God was born of a virgin in a cave on December 25th. At the same time, high in the western sky stood the constellation of Taurus, and close to it, this sign lay another cluster called the Sable, uh, Auriga. The three wise men and the star of the east is no less astronomical in the book Pagan and Christian Creed, uh, Edward Carpenter argued that this star was none other than Sirius, right? The Barker. According to him, as the star stood on the southern uh, meridian, directly overhead in that region, to the right it would lay, it would lie in a line pointing at it, the three stars in the Orion's belt. These stars were called the three kings. Prior to the Christian era, the Kemetic New Year began at the summer solstice, coincided with the flooding of the Nile and Sirius, uh, uh, heli heli heliacal rise. Sirius was then the herald of the new star, I'm sorry, of the new year, and since Yeshia was often identified with the Nile fertilized and efflux, Sirius was also Yeshia herald. The reader may also bear in mind that the entire nat uh, nativity scene depicted upon the walls of the Temple of Amen at Lexa, first built around 1700 BCE, commemor uh, commemorating the birth of Heru, Yosia the Younger, in four vignettes. Thus, the nativity is as much a rebirth as it is a new birth. These astronomical myths are key to our revealing the solar character of Jesus after its 25th Nividity, the sun's ascent on the ecliptic uh, for the next three months, representing its infancy and childhood. The progressive lengthening of the day revealed the sun's growth. At the spring equinox, the sun reaches its halfway point on the elliptic, intersecting the celestial equator. The, ter the terrestrial equator projected onto um, into space where day and night are perfectly equal, that the Econauts had a profound impact on the imagination of the ancients is shown by the fact that the Hebrews and the Romans began the new year at the vernal Econox, Jewish uh, Pesach, Passover, and its derivative Christian Easter of both equinoctial uh, celebration of the sun 
passes over the celestial equator forming a cross in the process thus the son of god is said to be crucified which is crucified right and since the sun remains in a position for three days, it is said to be crucified for three days. Thus, it died for three days. Further, the celestial equator forms a broad arc through the space that can be figuratively imagined as a mount or a skull. Here is our biblical Mount Calvary. The rising of Jesus from the dead can then be properly understood as a symbolic rising of the sun from the dead. But this son of god was originally Heru Horus, Yesir the younger resurrecting from his death at the hands of his evil brother set set is the prototype of the christian satan indeed satan is derived from set and and being a mark to emphasis and also means to come again to return so that the christian satan is the great manifestation of set satan is properly uh, popularly uh, depicted as a red figure with the hooves, tail, and horns of a goat. Set color as the merciless sun was red. The Greek pagan god Pan was part goat and is represented as leading Zeus to a mountain top in much the same way that Jesus was led to a mountain top by Satan. Satan was often depicted as a serpent, which is one of set uh, zootypical image images jesus was called the christ from the greek christus this christus comes from the comedic uh, caress the anointed one the title of yeshir tehuti thought and heru the jewish equivalent is messiah from the kinetic from the comedic uh, misus on the one hand and messiah on the other hand mess means to give birth son horus had the title called mess making him Horus son messiah is then messiah then is the son of yah the dead jesus was wrapped in bandages and laid in the tomb in the much in much the same way that yeshua was anointed and mummified since wrapping crosses were practiced uh, practices among the Hebrews, you can see that they adopted this practice from the comedic source. The story of Lazarus further betrays age old sacred symbolism. Lazarus, the deceased brother of two mourning sisters, is clearly identifiable with Yesir and his two sisters, Aset and Neat, who wail over his dead body. Jesus resurrected Lazarus, who raised the swat in his linen band is the same way that Yeshua was resurrected by his son Heru. And the, uh, the etymology of Lazarus is no less revealing. Lazarus broken up into Laz Azir us shows us the comedic article for L is Al, the Asir is Asir, and Yeshua and is and the us may be is or as to call common in the same way that Jesus called for Lazarus from the tomb. Thus, Lazarus is the Yesir the called. There's many more parallels we can cite, but the parallels are clear. The drama of Yesir and his consort exerted profound influence on the religion of Judaism, Christianity, and much later Islam. His influence was also expressed in the art of the early church. Early icons of Jesus depicted a black woolly-haired figure, often seated on his mother on the lap of his mother Mary. Some of these icons and statues were simply refashioned comedic deities of a set Isis that was carried to Europe by African sailors and Roman legions. Uh, before the reader assumed that the story is wholly fictional, it should be noted that the biblical narrative by largely allegorical, uh, woven loosely around historical events, neither less none i'm sorry nonetheless the core of the myth is still found in the heavens right above our head and in the earth at our feet and around us i implore the readers to explore the further the story further thereby unlocking the secrets that may guide us to that may guide us closer to the divine okay and so i just wanted to read that and just to give a breakdown so 
you know, um, it, it's 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 tough when you're a TI and you're a, a targeted individual, and you've been isolated um, by these wicked devils, okay, and who have uh, attempted to keep us away, us as black people, away from our original uh, spiritual science system of belief that deals with life and our deities are not other than um, representation of certain characteristics not only within us but also within the earth and the stars okay so like the word christos again anyone can be a christ christ wasn't just a title for one particular person right uh Back in those days, the uh, the pharaohs were considered themselves to be Christ. Even the the queens, right? They were also Christ. So it wasn't a title just for men, but also a title for women. And here's the difference between the comedic sacred science, a spiritual belief system, uh, again, which deals with science. Okay, not the supernatural, but it dealt with science. Okay, our ancestors developed a way to explain the movement of the earth, the movement of the stars, weather patterns, uh, certain things that happen within nature and gave those a tribute as well as within ourselves. And the goal of reaching a higher conscious level, right, you become a Christ, right? You are the leader of the people, right? So much way, sort of like Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Marcus Messiah Garvey, even uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, um, and as well as uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. So we have many uh, Christ that has come before us and uh, amongst us today, but white supremacy and white supremacists have sought to destroy um, those individuals and isolate them. And it is their way of trying to prevent, uh, you know, black people African people as well as Europeans because also prior to Roman invasion okay Europe also practiced the comedic spiritual belief system right so when you talk let's say let's talk about the Druids in, in, in Ireland okay they were practicing the comedic belief system and they were defined to Christian the uh, the Roman Catholic Church push, pushing Christianity uh, onto their people and their lands. And so what did the Christian Church do, which we celebrate, uh, not we, but, you know, the Irish and uh, people over the world celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day. But St. Patrick was a murderer, okay, who killed these individuals because they did not want to convert to Christianity. So even, as, even white people, you have to study your history and understand for over well over a thousand years something like 1500 years right the church has has created uh darkness in europe right they have and and, and have regressed the minds of generations of your ancestors okay they have murdered slaughtered in the sake of for the sake of their newly created religion so understand this. You can go all the way to Germany. All right? For areas, again, a black African had to escape the assassination attempt of the Roman Catholic Church on his life. And so it, it always kills me when and I see these these, these white uh, supremacists, they call themselves Aryans. <laughs> but I even because again, you know. When you're uneducated, when you're ignorant, you know, you just make up shit. You know, you, you believe what you want to believe. Even, you know, the, the, the Nazis, okay? You didn't think that they truly knew where their belief comes from? Many of you don't know, but the Nazis was in North Africa learning all the secrets, right, of the comedic people, Okay? Why do you think the Nazis were so advanced in terms of the technology that they were developing? 
Okay, it was because they were in North Africa. They were in Egypt. Okay, so again, things we don't understand, things we don't know about because we have been uh, led into mental darkness. And so because this is the age of information, they are seeking to suppress a lot of the information, even though it's out there. But they are they are targeting anyone who is researching and and learning about these things, right? And so we have to understand that. And so every black person in America, you have to understand that when you get to a, an age of thirty or uh, thirty two, which is again this is symbolic for them because thirty two is when Jesus reappeared in the Bible, and this is where they they you know they love to use that number in terms of targeting me, right? Um, and I'm not you know. Am I, can, can, could I be a crystals? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And their whole purpose is to destroy any body who they feel can be that individual. Any black person that can uh, um, unify black people as a whole. Right. And so you look at what they are, uh, who they are calling our leaders today. They are choosing these people to be our leaders. We are not choosing them. They are choosing these people to be our leaders. All right? So just remember that. And as a TI, you know, the technology being that they have developed and, and are using to suppress people, to, to control their minds, to put thoughts into their mind, and then label them as being crazy, um, you know, sometimes, you know, they're being used for evil uh, means. Right, whether it be exploitation, whether it be experimentation, whether it be for revenge or whatever else, uh, you know, those that are in power um, that have these technologies at their hand are using it against, you know, everyday people. So we have to understand that. So you need to stop asking yourself why is it being done to you and, and, and learn how to survive what's being done to you. And learn about what is being done to you. And one of the best uh, sites you can go to is psychologicalharassment.com, as well as you can read Mark Rich's book called The um, Hidden Evil, right? Uh, the uh, Financial Elite Covert War Against the uh, Population, the Civilian Population, okay? And um, also, um, uh, Starlight Terrorism in America by Dr. John Hall. But, you know, I usually don't. Um, speak about those things too much especially John Hall book but you know it is it, it is interesting and and he has he, he's also a TI and he has a vast wealth of information I actually bought um, his book as, as, as well as um, I think I bought Robert Duncan's book too um, but yeah you know uh, this is something that we all have to understand and these religious fanatics, they will stop uh, and add nothing to uh, not let the truth, uh, to let the truth come out, you know? They will um, target anyone who uh, speaks out against their false doctrine, uh, their false religion, you know, as well as Islam. These are just, uh, you know, psychopathic people creating something that is it wasn't is meant to control and uh, and for financial gains, okay? And when you go back to this, the comedic uh, sacred science spiritual belief system, it, it is about the improvement of yourself, all right? Um, or before I go, let's let me talk, say one different. So the difference between Christianity, Islam, and the comedic belief system is that the role that women play, women play it and a and a very important role in comedic belief system. So we have to understand this. The Europeans and the Arabs took the women out because again of the distaste for women, didn't see the women as their equal, right? But our, our ancestors understood that without the woman, our counterpart, there will be no us. There will be no um, reincarnation, sort of like the uh, metaphorical episodes of uh, of Haru, Aset, and Asa, right? So the woman would be Aset, Haru would be the child, right? And 
I saw the men. So that is the Trinity family, people. And all throughout African culture, thousands of years later, okay, the Africans believe in a communal system. Whereas Europeans believe in individualism. And it's the man, so which we have the system of patriarchy, and then which just has caused all sorts of issues, all sorts of problems within our society, past and present. So I wanted to um, just give a little information on where we are here. Here is the goddess uh, Shashat. And Shashat, okay, never much all these spellings, that was the ancient Egyptian goddess. Let me share that screen. So Shashat was the ancient Egyptian goddess of mathematics, creative thought, knowledge, books, and writing. Her name also means she who is described sister to Bast and daughter sister wife of thought or the moon god Jehuti. The Egyptian believed that she invented writing while thought and Jehuti taught writing to mankind. So here you have a, 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 a goddess or a, um, an Eter, right? A, uh, who is a woman who is credited with inventing writing and it was the male deities who were taught who was led to taught uh, right into mankind okay so there you go let's move to another one um right over here uh, here let's go to again uh the goddess ma'at okay ma'at depicted as a woman with feathers okay which she um, have the 42 laws of Ma'at. So Ma'at was the rule of law and moral justice among the Kemetic people and the divine uh, cosmological order within their mythology, astrology and astrophysical studies. Okay now let me let me uh, show you guys a picture of Go here. Uh, I'll pull that up in a minute. Just give me a sec, because I want you to understand the difference. Right? The difference between these uh, belief system uh, and, and again, the comedic belief system is not religion. It's not religious in any way, like uh, Christianity or Islam, right? And the central figure is not just one person. Okay, the central figure. Uh, figures in comedic uh, uh, spiritual sacred science belief system is the woman, the man, and the child. Okay, so we have to understand this. There we go. I'm just gonna add that to the background here. Let me do this. Okay. All right, let's get back to the video. Hey. So, behind me, okay, you will see the goddess Shashat. Let me move over here. Go this way. Nope. Go this way. <laughs> All right, Maat and Anuket. Right, so again, the removal of the female deity, the female counterpart to the male. How can you have a so called God who is a male, who is supposed to be the creation of everything, he created life, when in reality, and in nature, we know that it is the female species of every species on this planet that creates, at least create in the sense of creating that child within her womb, 
right? Yes, the men are important because the men is the one that watered that seed with their divine sacred water. And the woman within her sacred water, her primordial water within her, that divine water is what holds that child and protects that child and grow and cre that creates and grow that child. Understand the key difference. This is what Christianity has left out, what Islam has left out. And we, as black men, have been so conditioned with this patriarchy that we also view our women in the same eyes as white men view their women. And this is why we are so screwed up also. And for our black women, they have accepted the role of the patriotic, the, the patriarch uh, society in which the men makes all the rules and the women have to follow the rules of the men. Now, granted, this is the society that we live in, you know, in, in today's uh, age, but we we'll have to come into today's sense of purpose again, okay? And we are all being led astray. We are all being led astray and led from each other instead of coming together in unity and unifying. And, we, and the destruction of the black family is key to white supremacy continuing on in the trajectory that it's going to continue on, which is, again, the total dominance of the minority on, on this planet because as long as they can capture the minds and enslave the mind and bind the minds of their way of thinking, their way of belief system, which has, again, as history has shown us that, you know, they are the devils, okay, just going by their history and their action, right? So when they try to, for those of us who are uh, conscious and who are in the comedic uh, belief, all right, know that they are fighting against us and they will deny us opportunities because of our beliefs. This is nothing new from when the Muslim invaded Africa and wouldn't do business with locals until they convert to Islam, all right? So anything to keep us away from our true enlightenment, our true spiritual belief system, our true science uh, that we gave the world, right? You know, they have become experts and we are dumbed down with religion. Okay, so uh, with that being said, uh, let me go to Anaket, which I am going to just give a, a, a Um, let me find good insights. See, some of these sites, they have whitewashed the image of the comedic god and goddesses, okay? So I'm trying to find one. Okay, here we go. There we go. That's that's. Uh, so let's continue. Okay. So the goddess Anaket. Anaket is the goddess of the Nile River. It's associated with the yearly flooding, which embrace the fields nearby and give life to the crops. She's often depicted as a gazelle, an unk, and a headdress of ostrich feathers. Or wreath. Okay. So Anaket was the goddess of the Nile River. Her name means to embrace, much like the fields near the river, which were embraced by the waters. The two attributes of the Nile also stretched out like two arms, adding to the meaning behind Anaket of moniker. She was thought to be the daughter of Kanum, the god of the source of the Nile, Lake Victoria, and Satis. The goddess of fertility. Together, the three deities were believed to control and protect the yearly flooding of the Nile River. In some stories, she's associated with, with hunting 
and so she's depicted as a gazelle. Sometimes she is also depicted with the head of a gazelle, of a gazelle because of her association with bringing waters to crops around the Nile, which fertilize and nourish them. She is also associated with the childbirth and child rearing in some parts of the kingdom. All right, so again, let's talk about that. Also, oh, I can't forget this. I started on this. Uh, so the 666, which they have, Catholic Church has uh, made into the symbol of the of the beast, <laughs> you know, trying to prevent you from coming back into consciousness, right? And again, because of a comedic belief system, which is a science, right? So it, it's about uh, the atom. So we know within the atom is six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. So don't be fooled uh, by them using the number 666 to try to demonize it, right? Because again, this is the Catholic Church to, to uh, prevent you from going back to the original source, okay? So let's talk about melanin. Again, the truth about melanin. The dark matter that many have been taught to hate is called melanin is six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, which create a carbon atom, which is melanin. 666 in Christian circle is considered to be the mark of the beast and is said to be evil. However, 666 is melanin, God made. Basically, when they're talking about that, also is also to prevent white women and white men from having sexual relationship with black men because, uh, believe it or not, right? A lot of, when, when the Greeks came into, uh, Kemet, right? A lot of them saw black men and black women as gods and goddesses, right? This is why in the Greek mythology, the Greek goddesses are all painted black. Hercules was painted black, right? So hardly whitewashed it, you know? But again, we have to understand this, right? So, um, melanin refines the nervous system in such a way that message from the brain reach other areas of the body more rapidly in black people the original people black infants sit stand crawl and walk sooner than whites and demonstrate more advanced cognitive skills than their white counterparts because of the abundance of melanin Carol Byrne, uh, burns right your mental process and brain power are controlled by the same chemicals that give black humans their superior physical athletics rhythmic dancing abilities this chemical is melanin okay the abundance of melanin in black human produce a superior organism physically mentally and spiritually this is why the founders of the world great religions are black melanin is the neurochemical basis for what is called soul in black people in the same way black excel in athletics they can excel in all other areas as well like they did in the pants once the roadblocks are removed right so, again, um, you know, it talks about melanin, and it doesn't mean that blacks are superior to whites. It just means that there are certain aspects within black people that are uh, better suited for certain things. Okay? Just like there may be certain aspects of white people that may be better suited for certain things, like the ability to, to survive in cold weather, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I understand it. And also understand that also that white people came about because of black people. Black people never migrated out of Africa or had uh, wait uh, for a longer period to migrate out of Africa when the last ice age uh, across Europe uh, melted, when the ice melted. There wouldn't be any white people as we know them today. Okay? So just remember that. And there's no doubt in saying that black people are the original people. And they're, that, that's a fact. And there's not, nothing racist about that. Okay? And so, dude, let's, let's just understand that. All right? So, people, we got to wake up. We got to wake up and understand what's going on. Okay? Go back to do some research, I would say. You know, a lot of you won't because, again, you're afraid of the truth. And because uh, you've been fed lies and lies and lies from the history books, <clears throat> from television, Hollywood, all based on lies. Okay. 
And so, uh, you know, just, just like I said, just do some research and go back to uh, uh, the original sources. And, um, you know, then you can make a decision. But don't follow anything blindly. I didn't, even when, you know, researching this stuff. But it, it become, uh, you know, cemented in facts, grounded in, in truth and evidence and so you know this is why they want you to uh keep away from from the truth from knowledge but i what I, I would say always seek knowledge okay always seek knowledge do not run from knowledge seek knowledge it will make your life a whole lot better okay in terms of uh you know your your awareness of the truth okay now people will hate you for it because again you, you know you're you're going against their belief system, you know, which is a false system, but, uh, you know, you, you got to understand that, right? So, this is, the video is a little long. Uh, if you can, if you able to watch through it, I thank you, and uh, see you guys in the next video.